Have you ever wondered what it's like being a security expert, hunting down bugs and trying to ensure that the software runs flawlessly? Then this video is for you. Okay. So in this video I want to cover three things. Number one, what do I do as a software engineer? As that to be specific. Number two, how does a tech company work and what are the other tech roles and responsibilities. So two years back I also was in the rat race of trying to get a good offer from a good company and I also did stuff like data success and algorithms, a good projects, wasted a lot of time on web development and other stuff and I really did not care or focus on this path like how do a tech company work and what are the other roles and responsibility that complete the cycle of how products are delivered and that's why I'm making this video because nowadays a lot of youtubers are there out there showing day in a life of software engineers those type of videos does not really need planning or anything we can just take camera shoot a day in a life video and it will go it will sometime go viral those type of videos actually give you a lot of motivation but there are many things that the people don't say about the company uh, or the startup that they are working because they are restricted to say what they do in a company so in this video i will just give you a brief overview of what we do what are the other roles how a product is developed because this is kind of essential the number one misconception that I had when I joined the company was uh, all I had to do was not to interact with any people. I could just sit in a corner, open up my laptop, put a hoodie and then code. And I'll be doing that for the rest of my time. I'll be able to get a good pay and not socially interact with others. So it was kind of a good job for me. But that is completely not true. So majority of the time, I would say around 60% of the time goes into meetings. Trust me, there is a lot and lot of meetings in a tech company. Like internal sync up, daily scrum, query session, grooming, sprint retro, lunch and learn, one on one and many more. And you might have probably heard people complain things like, Oh man, back to back meetings. Uh really tired this is true to an extent and companies can easily wrap up these meetings in just two to three emails but they keep on persisting to conduct these meetings for a reason that is to avoid miscommunication or confusion in the future but once the things start to progress and the developers start their implementation and the QA starts their testing phase everything falls apart and then there is still confusions which is where company is struggling to avoid this and so that the process becomes much faster but let's not dive deep into it because if someone from my company sees this this will not be good and also the memes on testers versus dev is true to an extent <clears throat> now let's get back to the main point from now onwards i'm going to take over because pranav is really trying hard to scare you off guys and he has not yet come to the important point he just keeps wandering around and if you are thinking who i am then i am the real engineer uh, who is the main reason behind pranav uploading tech videos on his youtube channel so you can call me the engineer or uh, yeah engineer is fine mm, too much <clears throat> so what i'm going to do now is explain this stuff in an old school approach because if pranav starts editing all this stuff through animations and through you know high level text then consider this video not uploading anytime soon because he is just a lazy editor and also you are going to fall in love with my beautiful handwriting so let's start <clears throat> how does a tech company work or uh, let's just say how is a software delivered in a product based company disclaimer this is just a very simple or high level knowledge that i am trying to share none of the actors <coughs> sorry none of the information will be 100% correct as it depends and changes from company to company this is just me trying to share some knowledge that i have and if i am wrong then please do correct me this circle represents those IT professionals who basically spend most of the time in front of computers with little to no human interactions, known as SDEs, aka the developers. And there are so many developers in an organization. This small circle represents quality assurance or analyst team also known as the testers, which will be a smaller team and they don't usually go well with each other. One find fix for a solution and pass it to testers and the other find bugs and throws it back to the developers. So nothing much to say. There is also a third category in some organization known as the SDEs with a T that is software development engineer in test who basically work for the QA team but have code access. They have good programming knowledge but not to develop something but to write code which makes lives of a testers way easier through what is called the automation. In simple terms, make use of company resources like laptops and softwares which saves time or energy to find bugs or edge cases way faster than a functional tester. 
and there are so many type of automation like ui automation api mobile blah 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 and the tools that we use for this purpose are selenium apm playwright specflow and a lot more depending on what company uses we already know that developers communicate with each other using languages like html css javascript python c java python c sharp etc similarly to use these frameworks sdets or automation engineer uses languages like java javascript c sharp etc that too depending on what company uses and dev write something called as tdd that is test driven development to test Test code, whereas SDs usually write BDDs, which is behavioral driven development, to understand whether the behavior of a software is intact, and no other code changes has affected the parts of the product. Now, let's say everything went well between developers and testers, and there is a happy ending. Then these features will be pushed by multiple such team into production, like 2024.0.0 release or 2025.1.0 future release. And here is where the DevOps team comes into play. and they mainly focus on the continuous integration and continuous delivery of the software product and this final product is where the real end users or customers like you and me uses the product find bugs which entirely screws up the developers and the testers now you might be thinking who decides these features to be added onto the product and which release dates they are targeting so that is where the po comes in not pissed off people but the product owners they take complete responsibility and work closely with multiple teams like design team sales and marketing team research team and end users and they possess a calendar filled with a lot and lot of meetings which is way more than us and these are people with a lot of immense knowledge about the product domain and the opponent's product and what is happening around the overall market and they assign the features to the respective developer team after all the analysis and research done now i have talked a lot about the people who are associated with delivering products and who mainly work on the technical side but there are some more people to manage all these people and they are called the managers and of course the team lead so team lead basically has a smaller team but they also technically work like a team manager any issues faced by the developer or qa people will be solved by these people <clears throat> as you know with, with great, great power, power comes great responsibility the main reason why i decided to go with an estate career path is mainly because first uh, i was offered a decent good pay <laughs> and second was when i searched google i got to understand that estate is a domain where we have to wear multiple hats so i thought this is the best opportunity for me to explore different stuff so i'll be able to get my hands dirty on testing side as well as on the development side and also in later stages i will be able to get my hands into devops and stuff like that so i was like interested to know what all these stuff are so that's why i decided to go with career path as an estate but if you're sure that coding is for you and you want to either be a full stack developer or a front end or a back end then i would say you know apply for sd roles and try to go into a startup if you are beginning your career because you get to learn a lot uh, even though the pay might be comparatively less and there's a lot to talk about sd because right now i just give you a brief of what all things i do and there are so many things that i have not done yet uh, so what can i do is basically in the future once i try to explore all the automation and stuff i'll make a video explaining the things that i do the tools that i work the stuff that i find interesting and the challenges that i face so do let me know how you want that video to be uh, you want to see my office or you like this type of content uh, of me sitting in my room and explaining this stuff or a mix of both so do mention that in the comment section below and also if you have any particular questions do ask them because if i don't know then i can ask someone who might have a better understanding of this stuff So yeah guys that's it for this video let me quickly wrap up before Pranav comes and you know ends this outro because it's quite boring and i am fed up of that outro so yeah guys that's it uh, thank you for sticking to the end so bye bye Hey man you forgot about the subscribe part